Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Explain This. I'm with the star of the show, Robin Riddle. Robin, are you ready? I am ready. Are we talking about peptide? Another peptide, Another yes. peptide. <laughs> Guys, we're going to link all of our peptide videos in the description below. This one's going to be a really, really great one. It is tirzepatide slash manzero? Manjaro? Manjaro. Manjaro. Like Mount Kilimanjaro. That's Ma what they named it after. Mount Kilimanjaro slash Manjaro. 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 <laughs> Goodness. Yes. What is this? Okay. So um, this is one of the newest medicines on the market that is actually FDA approved for treatment of type 2 diabetes used off label for weight loss. Okay. So a lot of people are coming in asking what the difference is between Monjoro or tirzepatide and semaglutide or Wagovi. Okay. Okay. Yep. So this is kind of to help you compare between the two and tell you what tirzepatide is. Um, so the tirzepatide is a dual glucose dependent insulinotropic polypeptide. Ro Robin, <laughs> I, I thought we weren't going to do this. I'm it, sorry. I'm sorry. I mean, sorry. all these big words. <laughs> it's abbreviated GIP. <laughs> GIP. Okay. So there you go. Okay. Um, so it's a GIP and a glucagon like peptide one receptor agonist. Okay. So GLP one RA which the normal GLP-1 that we talk about is like the Ozempic, um, Wagovi, semaglutide. So those are just GLP-1s? Those are just GLP-1s. Okay. So this one, those are all in cretins. This one they call the twin cretin because okay. it works in two different ways. So that's a <laughs> cool little name they came up for it. Um, so this is first of its kind to act in these two different ways. So there's a bunch of GLP-1 receptor agonists on the market. This is the first of its kind that includes that GIP with it. Okay, so there's okay. nothing else like this. Nothing the else like this. GLP-1 this plus it. the GIP. Yeah, this is it. First okay. one of its kind. Okay. Hit the market about a year ago. Okay. Um, so to review, a GLP-1 um, helps to suppress hunger helps to delay gastric emptying time, improves insulin resistance. So the benefit of Monjoro or tirzepatide is now they've added that GIP hormone to okay. it as well. So this is going to enhance the appetite regulation of the GLP-1. So it makes that work a little bit better. And it helps to initiate the process that helps burn energy from eating food. Okay. Okay. So okay. We're, we're hitting a couple of different ways with this. So I'm hearing you're going to be even less hungry mm -hmm. than you would be on a on semaglutide. Yeah. Plus, it helps you use the food that you do eat more mm -hmm. efficiently. Yeah. You're gonna get, you're gonna burn things off better. Burn Got that it. energy off better. Okay. Yeah. Um, so benefits of this, and it's the same as the GLPs, we're going to have that improved insulin sensitivity, better glycemic index, improves lipid metabolism, and of course, weight loss. Mm. So again, like I said in the beginning, Monjoro is actually only FDA approved for type 2 diabetes. But just like we did with Ozempic when it was only FDA approved for diabetes, we use it off-label mm. all the time for things. Um, so weight loss is the, what we're using this off-label for. Uh, and through the studies, it has shown better weight loss than Ozempic Wagovi semaglutide. Those are all the same. Those are all the same thing. I think I've specified that before. Yeah. Ozempic, Wagovi, and semaglutide are all the same thing. Yep. So this is even better weight loss. In the studies, um, the semaglutide was like 15 to 19% weight loss. Um, this one is 22%, an average of 22% weight loss from baseline. So we're getting really good weight loss out of this one. So how do you, like, what does that conversation look like with a patient trying to choose? They're coming in for weight yeah. loss. And clearly, they, I mean, Ozempic, Monjaro, it, they're all the rage right now. Yeah. So, like, how do you have that decision-making process with um, patients? So, part of it depends on if they've ever taken anything like this before okay. and how they responded to it. So, I have some patients who have been on the semaglutide for a while that are starting to feel like it's just not doing it anymore. Got it. Their weight has kind of stalled. They've maxed out their dosing. They've still got that appetite that they just can't keep under quite good enough control. That's a great time to switch over to the tirzepatide instead Interesting. because we're going to get better results that way. Um, also side effect wise, it does carry the potential for the same side effects, but we don't see the nausea coming through with this one as much. This seems like better, I, and I, yeah. I, I and I love all of them. Yeah, <laughs> but um, this seems like 
seems better. It's, it's a step up okay. for sure. Okay. Um, so if someone has taken the Wagovia, the semaglutide, and they had a ton of nausea with it that they just couldn't handle, the GI just was too much, um, they may respond a lot better to the tirzepatide because we tend to just not see that come through mm. quite the same. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. It, the nausea is the first thing you hear about with yes. any of them. Yes. So I see a lot less with okay. this. Um, so the, the decision-making process in starting someone on one of these at all is what are we looking to achieve here? Do we have issues with insulin resistance? Um, and we've got a video on the insulin resistance you can look back to that kind of explains that. Um, do we yo-yo and wait a lot? Are we trying to get that weight off and keep it off? Mm. Because the big thing that this class of medications can do, and the GLP-1s as well, um, it creates a new set point for the body. And I talk about that a lot with my patients. Mm. Your body has a weight that it's comfortable with, that it wants to return to. When that's an overweight, number we need to create that new set point so we need to program the body to be comfortable with a lower weight mm. <clears throat> so this can do that for us um so we uh, you know going through the conversation with patients i'm always starting out with I don't want this to be a crutch. These medicines are not intended um, when we're using them for weight loss. It's not something I intend my patients to be on forever. Right. This is a tool to help make it easier to get where we want to be. Right. We're going to get results a little bit faster. That's very motivating. You know, it's so it's just so disheartening to be doing all the right things. You're dieting, you're exercising, and the weight's not mm -hmm. budging at all. Yeah. It's very easy to give up and be like, you know what? What's the point? I'm going to go eat my little Debbie cakes and just be happy with myself. Right. Um, so this is going to get things moving where you might not be able to get things moving on your own. Got it. But you have to combine this with appropriate dietary changes, appropriate exercise, those lifestyle changes. Mm -hmm. If you Google these medicines and read out there, the number one thing that people are complaining about is the fact that they regain weight when they stop the medicines. Right. If you're not changing what made you overweight to begin with, you cannot expect this to be a magic fix. You will lose the weight while you're on it. And then when you stop, if you're doing the same things that created that weight gain to begin with, you're going to gain the weight again. I feel like that's kind of common sense. Right. If you are eating total junk and you just eat less of it, sure, you'll lose weight. Once you eat more of it, you're going to gain weight again. Right. So we do have a nutritionist on staff, Lucas, that we yep. do encourage patients to talk to um, because th those long-term lifestyle changes are very critical with this. I wonder if, you know, say you get off uh, tirzepatide, mm -hmm. tirzepatide um, does it, do you go back to, are you going to feel hungry all the time from, go, from being not hungry? Um, so or does that you, reset you, you that? You regain an appetite where you wouldn't have had as much of an appetite before. One of the things that I do with my patients to make sure we're not going from zero to 100 on this is that we taper off the mm -hmm. medication. Okay. When we start something like this, we're tapering on to the medication slowly to get the body used to it. We taper off of it to get the body used to not having it. Got it. So if you go from a high dose of this to nothing the next week, it is easy for that appetite to come back and really be very difficult to handle because... Mm -hmm. Say you've been on it for six months, you've not been super hungry, and now all of a sudden you have this appetite again, you don't know how to handle it. Right. That level of self-control, you got to have a lot to deal with that. But if we slowly taper off of this, that appetite slowly returns, it's going to be a lot easier to control, wrap your head around like, okay, these are my portion sizes now, this is what I need to be doing to maintain. What's interesting when I think about these medications, this class, and, and you're saying that this is a whole different class, the GLP-1s plus the GIPs. Yes. So okay. it, it still does all the same things that the GLP-1 receptor agonists do, but we get the added bonus of the GIP. The thing that I think about, and I, I know you talk about this every single day, is you know how do you get it? What's the insurance? Because yeah. that's the big question. Is yeah. like which one's going to be covered? Which one isn't? How do I afford it? Yeah. And so kind of going back to your question a little bit about how do we pick what we go on? Yeah. Okay. Um, part of it comes down to cost. Yeah. And so the Ozempic is only FDA approved for type two diabetes. Only way you're going to get it is if you're a type two diabetic. Uh, brand name Monjoro, exact same situation. You're okay. not getting this through unless you're a type two diabetic, and typically you have to have failed therapy on several other agents as well okay um but we do have compounded versions of these um oh well and then there's wagovi so wagovi is back on the market now uh there is a online coverage checker that you can run for wagovi which is 
will go via semaglutide. There's a coverage checker online. You can see if your insurance covers it. That's cool. Yeah. So if we've got insurance coverage, I'm probably going to go that route okay. because patients will get it for, you know, $20, $25 a month. Um, again, it's the semaglutide. So it's just the GLP-1 receptor agonist. But those work great. I mean, that's what we've been using for a long time. They still work great. Right. So if we can get insurance coverage, I'm going to go with Wagovi and we're going to keep it to the least expensive option. But then if we have no insurance coverage for anything, we're moving into the realm of compounds. We have compounded tirzepatide and we have compounded semaglutide. Um, cost is a big determining factor with these. Yeah. The tirzepatide is significantly more expensive than the semaglutide is. Got it. Um, so that uh, sometimes is the the major determining factor. Yeah, I fear I've, I've, that's it's a big part of the conversation. Yeah, you know, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, so we we talk about cost, and we can give you the breakdown of what's your monthly cost both ways. Um, then we look at again what side effects have you had in the past? Like, mm. have you tried this before? Um, again, if you had a lot of nausea with the semaglutide, it's worth trying the tirzepatide. Mm. And, the, you know, if you've been on the semaglutide for a while, results are not great any longer. Good to switch over to the tirzepatide. Um, and some people just come in and they've read about both of them and they just want Monjaro and that's what they want. And so we get the compounded tirzepatide for them. Yeah. And, and but they're coming in for the for the same reason. Most yeah. every time it's typically weight is what most people are wanting to use these for again these are actually diabetic medications are great for that but typically the patients i'm seeing are coming in because they they've heard about it for weight loss and that's what they want to use it for right yeah super interesting these, yeah. these this this class of medication plus the glp ones uh, are just incredible. They really are. Now, there's there's um, risks with any medication that you take. Yeah. <clears throat> so we always run through that with patients. And if you've not watched my semaglutide video, watch that one as well. I kind of go through the whole big talk with it. But the big things with this, if you have a history of pancreatitis, you're not going to be a candidate for these medications mm. um, because that's one major risk. Very rare, but you can develop pancreatitis with this. Um, the other one, if you have a personal or family history of uh, uh, MTC, medullary thyroid carcinoma, or any C-cell thyroid tumors, you're not going to be a candidate for this. Okay. In the studies, um, it showed the potential for developing something like that. And so that's put on the list of risks. If we have a known history of that, we're avoiding this class of medication. Interesting. Um, but otherwise, the big thing that we generally see, again, nausea is number mm -hmm. one, but again, less with the tears epitide. Um, you know, some reflux, maybe a little bit of constipation because it's slowing the, the gastric emptying down. So things are moving through a little bit slower. Um, I give all my patients Zofran to go along with it. So if you do have some nausea, we control it that way. And then we control it through um, diet, through what you're doing. Yeah. You know, if you're eating healthy, you're going to be a lot less likely to have that nausea effect with it, too. I know this is an impossible question to answer. Oh, no. <laughs> but, you know, is there anything you're seeing in the office with your patients as far as when you can start to see some results? Or I know it varies. Yeah, it definitely varies. Um, so the first four weeks on it is what's considered a subtherapeutic loading dose. So this is just getting the medicine into your system. Okay. So I always tell my patients, if you feel nothing in the first four weeks, that's okay. We're just getting your system used to it. If okay. we try to slam in with a high dose, you will be sick. Yeah. And there's no way you're going to take it. Um, so the tirzepatide dosing starts at 2.5 milligrams. So first four weeks is at 2.5. Um, a lot of people do start notice, noticing a difference in that time frame. So we start seeing that slightly decreased appetite. You know, you're just not thinking about food all the time. That's not your, your driving motivation behind everything anymore. Um, definitely when we start upping that dose is when we really start seeing the results. So okay. by month two, we go up to five milligrams, definitely start seeing something there. Uh, then it can go up to 7.5, 10, 12.5, max of 15. Okay. Most people don't have to get that high with it. Most people it's somewhere between 7.5 to 10 because that's where we get the results we're looking for, Okay. which is decreased appetite, but you're still able to eat. The whole point of this is not to make you starve yourself to death. Um, so that decreased appetite, but we're feeling good, so we're not dealing with nausea all the time, and we're losing weight. Those are the three things I'm looking for with my patients. And once you find that, that's the dose yeah. you typically stay on. Stick with it. Yeah. If we hit a plateau at some point, we always have the option to bump it up, but it's not always more is better with this. Like, use what works and stick with it. What I didn't realize is how this could be uh, an option for those stalling if yeah. you're on another one. Have, yeah. you, have you been experiencing that? In the I office? have. Yeah. Now, this is not something that has a direct conversion. Um, so you're on a certain milligram. Right. Okay. Right. So manufacturer recommendation is like, say you're on, you know, 1.7 milligrams of the Wagovi 
or 2.4, I guess that would be your max you could go to. Say you've been on 2.4 of Wagovi, you can't like switch over to the 15 of the Monjoro. Okay. Um, that's the max dose of both of them. You can't do that because okay. the GIP is so different. So we have to drop it back down and slowly start working back up again. Interesting. So yeah. you'll kind of, you'll start over to a degree, Yeah. but you're still, it's probably, you probably break the straw, the stall pretty quickly you, you do you do yeah usually within that first month of switch patients are noticing a big difference with Super it cool and again um if you didn't already know this from the other glp videos this is done via injection i don't know if i said that this is a once weekly subcutaneous injection so the medication stays stored in the refrigerator once a week you give yourself a shot in the belly or the leg wherever you want to do that do you coach anybody on timing of that does it matter or you know i've consistent? had enough people tell me that taking it in the evenings helps them sleep through any nausea they may have okay oh that i just tell my patients that now okay technically this lasts in your system for a whole week nausea can come up at any point during that week but uh, a lot of people have told me that they do theirs at night and they just feel better doing it that way yeah. so do it at night well tip there guys yeah tears appetite tears appetite tears appetite slash manjaro 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 you, you explained it you explained it <laughs> guys thank you so much for hanging out with us as always we're going to link all those videos robin mentioned in the description below so check those out if you haven't uh until then we'll see you next time it don't go away. <laughs>